What's going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Today, we're going to continue on doing our Badge Life series. We're going to take a look at the original DEF CON badge, like these guys, take a deeper dive, and we're going to take a look at a really cool badge. If you can't see it already, this guy right here is the Hack Boy, and this thing is so sick. And this badge, just like many of the other ones, not very easy to get, so I'm extremely lucky to have one. If you watch much of my stuff from the past, you'll know that I love little screens, flashing LEDs, all that stuff, so this badge is right up my alley. Not only that, but it also plays Doom. Not just any Doom, though. This is actually a custom version of Free Doom, which is a free version of Doom with no licensing on it. Man, these things are just way too cool. So that's enough yapping. Let's get into it. All right, so my first introduction to badge life is actually this guy right here. This is my human badge from DEF CON. Now, of course, anytime you're about badge life, it's all about making it even cooler, adding little trinkets, pins that I got from friends and you know other people, and then the SEOs, the shitty add-ons right here, plugs right in there. This one's got a little light you can't see because it's washed out from all my lighting. But yeah, this is my first badge, and I am in love with this thing. Now, the human badges go to the mere mortals like us, the plebs. There are, however, a bunch more badges out there. But thanks to viewers like you, specifically Polybius, I actually got my hands on an exhibitor badge right here. And this says vendor. This is the vendor badge. But oh, idiot. And then this is the exhibitor badge right here. Very cool. See, it even says exhibitor on here. See, I can read. Oh, shoot, my 3D printed buttons fell off. That happens sometimes. I actually got to print them a little bit smaller. But yeah, you can even 3D print buttons for them, which is pretty cool. Now, I did show this badge a little bit during my DEF CON video, but I promise we revisit it and we're going to take this thing apart and see what makes it tick. So let's switch cameras and take a closer look. But first, a quick shout out to today's sponsor, PCBWay. I can't make a badge light video without PCBWay. That's where all the magic happens. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for anything PCB and and as you'll see later when I crack these things open, they can do so many cool things for you. Multi-layer, they got you. You can do silk screening, different solder masks. There's so many options, and PCBWay's got you covered from beginning to finish. So yeah, if you're going to be making a badge for DEF CON or making anything PCB-related or 3D print-related or CNC, PCBWay's got you covered. Thanks a lot for your continued support. Let's get back at it. All right, so the first badge we'll take a look at is this guy. This is my exhibitor badge, and this has the default DEF CON firmware. Fun fact, when these first went out, it actually shipped with a version of the firmware that couldn't save to the SD card. So you'd have to like redo your settings every time you turned it on. Luckily, they had folks over at DEF CON that were flashing the badges. So that wasn't an issue after like the second day. So that's pretty cool. So this is the way the badge would look to everybody else. But when you're wearing it and playing it, it's actually kind of upside down like this. So there are buttons on the back. And if we press one of them, I always forget which one it'll turn on. Hey, there we go. And luckily, it has a brightness, so I was able to turn the brightness down so you guys can actually see the screen for once. So yeah, you can see game data loaded, which was something it wouldn't do before. So now we can go into there, and then I can turn the LEDs on, but I have a feeling if I do that, it's going to be even harder to see. I guess that's not too terrible. But yeah, this has just got the default firmware on it, and basically, it's like Pokemon. And yeah, you can just start and select right here your buttons there. You can walk around, and what's cool is once you leave your room right here, you actually have hop on the monorail, which is the way I got to DEF CON. And then it shows that's the outside of DEF CON. You can walk in and then everything's split up into the different tracks. So you can actually set the time on this, which is cool as well. And what it does is when you are in one of the lectures, you can actually get like fun facts and additional information and a whole bunch of stuff like that. So this is a really cool setup that they did. Now, as I showed before, you can also play Game Boy ROMs and all sorts of other cool stuff. This other one over here is running Doom, which is again, really cool. Let's open this guy up, get a better look because there's really nobody showing the insides of these and they're actually relatively easy to open up. All right, so let's be really careful because I did break a clip doing this before eh, just be super gentle because again it comes apart by hand it's just clipped closed there we go excellent here we have the badge in all of its glory now i actually taped the battery down so it didn't rock and roll all over the place let's see if i can get it off of here there we go and there is our pcb so if we take a really close look at this you can see they have all sorts of extra stuff on there here is the entropic logo up here i'm not actually going to get into any of the drama around entropic there's a ton of videos on it i don't need to make another one of them so pull the battery out real quick to make this a little easier and to make sure i don't accidentally short anything and it broke okay looks like the battery is not going to come off so we're just going to be really careful about it yeah you can see your buttons here these are all the neo pixels 
bunch of cool ones there. USB-C down there. This is IR. They definitely have IR. If we flip it over, I'm trying to see where the Raspberry Pi is. It must be on the other side. Carefully flip this over. Here we go. And then, yeah, right here is the Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi 2350. I'm pretty positive. The absolutely beautiful silk screening on these things. You don't always see it directly through the case. So yeah, once you take it apart, you can really get a feel for how nice they are. Of course, we have even more NeoPixels. They are gorgeous. Great job, DEF CON, for doing this whole badge. This thing is absolutely epic. I've seen a bunch of other DEF CON badges, and this one, this one really seems to take the cake as far as cool badges go. All right, so that's enough about the official badge. Let's take a look at Hackboy. So this is the Hackboy by Ann Not X or took forever to figure that out it says on their twitter or on their website how to pronounce it i'm nearly positive it's and not xor an absolutely huge shout out to jason for this thing jason was nice enough to send me one of these after he got it at defcon for wearing a dead mouse mask all day that was such a cool thing i appreciate you so much man this is so freaking cool now these things were given away to some people for being cool it was also given away as a ctf and they had them inside snacky which was actually a vending machine that was part of the ctf so let's get this thing open sealed for your protection aha in all of its glory the hack boy now what's cool about this is it's a 100 from silk road real game boy case i mean whatever real means but yeah it says and not x dc 32 badge do not use double a batteries yeah definitely don't use double a batteries these are like 18 something or other in here i can't remember exactly what these were oh they're 14 500 batteries so don't use double A's. The other thing that I just absolutely love about this is that they use the same like on off switch. They've got all the ports down here. So obviously there's no headphones or anything, but if you can look in there really far, it's hard to see, but there's actually the boot and reset buttons for the board. Then over here, USB-C. So they actually reuse all of the holes in the case. Very, very, very clever. Just to show you how close it is to an actual Game Boy, we have an actual Game Boy. This one's actually AWOC's very own Game Boy. And you can see, I'm pretty sure they got the exact same case from the exact same place because this thing is like carbon copy of this guy. However, unlike the actual Game Boy, if we fire this guy on, ugh, the button's really hard to switch. I'm always afraid. There we go. There it is. It's got a really authoritative button. But we fire this up. It's got a backlit. I'm not sure if that's an OLED or what, but it's an actual screen, which is very fun. Now, this thing is running free Doom, so it's a free version of Doom, and they went ahead and actually reskinned it. So instead of having guns on it, they changed it over to rubber chickens. I think that's really cool. You'll also notice that the lights and stuff are changing. So as you take damage and as you're using ammo, it actually changes the colors of the LEDs. I thought that was such a cool idea. You can just watch the gameplay. Again, this is just the demo part of it. But yeah, you can see this is really cool. And it runs pretty well for the hardware that's in it. This is effectively just a Raspberry Pi 2040. So it's the predecessor to the one in the actual DEF CON badge. But yeah, again, it runs pretty well. So what are we going to do with it? We're going to go ahead and take it apart and take a closer look because I haven't even opened this thing yet. I'm psyched. Hopefully I don't break it. I'll be devastated. But let's take a look. First things first, power off and pop out the batteries. Whoa, damn, that thing's in there. So let's grab our electric screwdriver from Miniware. I absolutely love this thing. It's awesome. Uh, screws, where are screws? So it looks like there's four screws for this guy. Whoops, try not to strip, strip my screws out already. All right, is that any more? Hopefully there's none under here. That would be annoying. No, oh, there's two more. Almost missed you. Oh no. Whoop. Oops. Okay. And come apart. Ah, we do. Scary. That was very scary, actually. That goes there. And here we go. Okay. So we have this. What is going on here? I'm a little confused. What's this? Why? You can plug an actual Game Boy cartridge into this. What? If anybody has any idea why that's there, please let me know. I'm very interested. All right. Let's see if we can take this off without breaking everything careful the screen's a little little stuck eh it's so hard to do on camera is there anything holding us in place doesn't look like there should be actually maybe i'll take the ribbon cable out or actually let's just do this this is easy enough huh we'll just flip it over there we go that's the ticket and take a closer look man leave it to these guys look at how gorgeous this pcb is it's just the silk screening on it we have the button pads man this thing's so nice these are all the neo pixels that light up in the back and it says doom on the bottom of course, and not extra right there. 
I love this. This is super like, I would, this would be a cool badge just in itself. If it just had the Neo pixels in this, I would, I would definitely get that. That's super freaking cool. All right, let's put this back on here and take a closer look at the back because that's where all the magic happens, apparently. There we go. So yeah, right here is the Raspberry Pi 2040, as we talked about before, ribbon cable for the screen and a bunch of other stuff. Man, why does it have... <laughs> Whoops, I just yeeted something. I got to find that. BRB. Whoops. It was just the IR port. There's no IR, right? There's no IR. No, there is no IR on this. Confirmed. But it has the Game Boy port. Why does it have the Game Boy port? It's so freaking cool. Like, look at this. Um, let me grab a game. Does it even fit? Game Boy cartridge. This is actually, uh, I think, Pokemon. Again, this is AWOX. But yeah, it fit. Why does this, why does it do that? Can it play Game Boy? I mean... They said it could play ROMs, but I didn't know whether or not it could play actual cartridges. That's freaking wacky. Well, let's uh, throw it all back together and see if it actually will play because, yeah, that'll be really freaking interesting. All right, reassembly time. Where do you go? I'll go this way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, there. One eternity later. Go ahead and pop the batteries back in and let's see if we broke it. Do, 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 do. Eh, eh. Hey, it still works. We didn't break it. Hooray. All right, so turn it back off. Moment of truth. Uh, off. There we go. And this go in. And this go in. Does this go the other way? No, it doesn't go the other way. That doesn't work. Eh? Eh? Nope. Doesn't work. Huh. Editing Sasquatch here. So what I found out was that the Game Boy port was actually supposed to be for SAOs that I don't think they ever got around to making. So that's actually why they put the Game Boy little port on there. Fun fact. So that's the Hackboy by and not Exor. Now they've made a ton of other badges and honestly, I'm gonna to try to start collecting as many of them as I can. If anybody has any more and not XOR badges or any badges in general they wanna to donate to the channel, please let me know. This was so much fun. You never get to see people tearing apart stuff like this because everybody's so concerned they're gonna break it. And honestly, I was too. But if we didn't tear this thing apart, we wouldn't know that it has a Game Boy actual like plug on it. And why does it have that? Does anybody know? I would love to find out. I'm gonna tag everybody I know that might be able to have an answer. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you've gotten this far in the video, you're an absolute legend. You guys mean the world to me. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you next time.